Good afternoon, folks. I'm just so thankful that we can get together again. Uh, it's just been a, it's been a real privilege. My name is Kenny. It's my wife Jane, and the program that we're doing is just teaching moments. And you know, just reflecting back, uh, OCN is coming up in May, just in about another month. We've been on the air for about one year, and but it's just been really exciting. Um, it's been a, you know, a new television station that is just starting up and been going through the birth pains and growing and, and adding on and, and different shows coming. And uh, it's just been a, you know, it's a real adventure in faith. And we just want to thank you so much for, you know, tuning in and supporting, praying for OCN and, you know, the where God would have this program to go to reach out to the nations and to to bless people. You know, the whole area why we why we share and the different people that on on OCN share is to, to bring the gospel, the good news. And this gospel changes people. It's the only thing in the world that will actually change a person's heart to where the the sin that came into this world and the penalty from the sin, the only thing that can take it away is this gospel of Jesus. And it's not by good works. It's not by you trying to help you know, so many people across the street or give so much money or different things like this, but the gospel, the good news that Jesus loves you, he died for you, and he took away you know, your penalty that was before the Father. And that by receiving him, he gives us everlasting life. And, you know, it's just what a privilege it is. We're just kind of a little bit of a background today. You know, my wife and myself, we live uh, in a community here about 90 miles away up in the mountains. And we've been in, in the construction field for about 40 some years. And what got us involved here with OCN is coming down and helping, putting together some of the stages and some of the backgrounds here and then over this last year we've been you know changing things around and you've been seeing different sets come and come and go you know like that and with our producer Jack it's just been a real privilege and a real challenge you know it's 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 things that are new we're you know a lot of times we feel like we're kind of stumbling and bumbling but you know what God's behind it and he takes the stuff, the efforts from all of us. And he adds to him. It, he adds to us. It says he takes our words and these things that we, we speak. And it's, it's his anointing by his spirit that takes and makes life. And the things that come to you like that as you hear it, you know, the Holy Spirit will unction in your heart those things that are, are for you today. And so there's a lot of different menus that come, you know, it's just like at a, at a restaurant. There's more than just one, one item on that, on that menu. And here at OCN, we have several menus all day long. And as you come and you tune in, you know, the Holy Spirit's going to bear witness with you. And your heart's going to get warmed. And when you hear those things like that, it changes you. And I think that's what is, you know, what a, what a privilege it is, is to take this gospel and talk and share it with people. Because it is the power of God to change people's lives. You know, it's changed your life already, and it's changing it more and more every day as you see Jesus. And so a lot of the programs we bring, reason, we're bringing you and showing you Jesus. As you see him, it says, as you behold Jesus, you're transformed effortlessly. It's not like you trying by your bootstrap, I'm going to be better. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to have a bad thought to my neighbor. All of that self-effort stuff doesn't work. It's him who has come and he touches you and he changes you. And so as you, re you relax, sit back, just enjoy and Listen, you know, listen to the different programs. And there's be different times, different days of your life, different, I guess, just different moments that come in our lives and that we're being ministered to. You know, it's, 
for like myself, I was 18 years old when I got saved, and we were just talking to Mario, and he was a young man when he got saved too, you know, and my wife was real young. She, she's only 39 now, but she was real young when she got saved. But, you know, it's just how he comes, and he never leaves you nor forsakes you. He says that's his promise, and what a, what a sweet, sweet promise. You know, and I was going to share today about, you know, God wants your household saved. And, you know, so many times, um, it's like for myself, I was the first one in my household that was born again, you know, that received Jesus when I was 18. And out of that, how God says, he has like a foothold into your home. And he blesses your home and he starts working. And, you know, um, it's just a real sweet work of by the Spirit that he will do, you know, for you in your household. And so don't let it be a burden. I think this is something, you know, when I first got saved, it was kind of like, you know, the enemy comes along and he'll say, well, you got to tell everybody about Jesus in your home. And it's up to you. And it's all, you know, your problem. And it's all your, um, your responsibility. And it isn't. <laughs> it's Jesus' responsibility to get people saved. We're to share the good news, and just you're sharing the good news like it's just like going to the restaurant. You have a good meal, you eat it, you enjoy it, you tell your neighbor. It's that type of sharing. That's the good news, and it's Him that brings salvation. It's not us, you know. And so it really takes the burden off. And I just I want to read this one. It's a story about a household, and how. As you, th as you hear it, it's real unusual, but it, in, uh, in Acts 16, 31, it says, so they, so they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. This is, uh, he was talking about Cornelius when, when Peter went up and was directed by the Holy Spirit to go up and see this Gentile person. When God got you saved, he didn't just have you in mind. This is what I love. He just didn't have you in mind, just like he just didn't have me in mind. He sees he had your whole family in mind. That is why his word says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you, and you will be saved, you and your household. Now, this does not mean that once you believe in Jesus, your family members are automatically saved. But it means is that you have opened a big door for God to move into your family's life and touch many members of your family. This, this, is, this one story here is really sweet. I want to share it with you. So don't worry about your unsaved parents or grandparents. God knows how to reach out to them. A relative, this is a story, a relative of mine spoke only Cantonese and could not go to church because she was very old and her legs were weak. But Jesus appeared to her in a vision and spoke to her in perfect Cantonese. She had never encountered Jesus, but knew that it was him and understood that he said to her. After that, those who visited and spoke with her were amazed by her knowledge of Jesus. She was in the hospital, this lady, for a while, and sometimes she was even comatose, to where Jesus came to her and spoke with her and even read the scriptures to her in an unconscious stage. But yet, even up to the very last moment, God will reach out to your unsaved family members. This happened to my late maternal grandfather who used to make fun of me being a Christian. On his deathbed, he was grasping for air in great discomfort, but he couldn't, he couldn't die peacefully. My mother, who was with him, told him, Dad, just say, God, forgive me. Call on Jesus. My grandfather remained hardened and in great pain. But at the very last moment, he cried out, Jesus, forgive me. Doesn't that sound like that thief on the cross where he said, Jesus, you know, be with me. Or he wanted Jesus. And Jesus says, today you're going to be with me in paradise. Like this. You see, my grandfather had no time to pray the sinner's prayer. But God says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 2.21. Look it up. Jesus will find every excuse to save a person. My mother saw 
the peace of God come over my grandfather's face after he had called out to Jesus and he passed away peacefully. My friend, God's desire is that your entire household be saved. Right now, your family may be giving you a hard time, but because you are a Christian, a big door has opened for your, from your daddy God in heaven to touch them. You know, it, I love this is because this is who our God is. He's the God that made this universe. He's the God that's been here forever and ever. And when he created us, he created us in his image and he wanted to have he created man was the highest creation that he ever he ever made and he wanted to have fellowship with us all day long and you remember back it says in, in Genesis how he walked in the garden with Adam and Eve and they walked and they talked and they they had fellowship day and night and things like this you know and that was God's intent to just have fellowship with his creation because he loved his creation and he made us after his image. And so inside of us, there's that longing to be with him. And as they walked and they talked in that garden, it was so sweet. I think it's just, you imagine back, back in that day like that, where you were walking with him. And he says, he created it all for them. All the trees, every, everything that was out there. And so he gave them a free will to to be able to, you know, come to him. They weren't just some robots. And so the only thing, the only command that he ever had was, don't eat of the tree of, you know, good and evil. And you know why he gave that command? It was just only one command, no commandments, just one command. And yet it was just to see if they would just love him. I mean, they had millions and millions of other trees to eat from, but yet, they had a propensity to go after that one tree. There was just one little tree and eat of it. And it says, when the day they ate it, they died. We all died. But you know what? That didn't stop God. That didn't stop our Heavenly Father. What was so good about him is that, that uh, he took and, excuse me, I <laughs> got this one. He took and he came for them. You know, um, even, when, even when they rebelled, man rebelled and hid themselves. God saw us and he, he wanted us to have fellowship with us. And so that's what the plan of redemption is all about. You know, there would be someone that would come and take away the sins of the whole world. And that's Jesus. You know, and so the stories that, you know, we've been sharing over this last year is about this Jesus this wonderful savior, this man that came, became this God that became a man to come down and to be able to talk with us and have fellowship with us. And so he's the one that came and laid his life down so that we can have life. And that's what, you know, I, I think as you yourself, you know, you know that you have life because you've received Jesus. But you know, you take this, is this thing we're talking about the family you know, it's so neat is he reaches in and because of your position in that family, he can reach in and he can start blessing your whole family. And he actually acts like they're saved and he blesses them like they're saved, even though they're not. The, the good, it says the goodness of God leads us to repentance, leads us to turn away from our old ways and turn to him because it's his goodness that draws us. And so he has a special niche in your family right now because of his goodness you know because of you he can reach in and bless your family you know it's like myself I was the first one that got saved in my family we were we were in a church we we're religious but yet um, the church didn't talk about being born into his family receiving Jesus as your savior and knowing that you can live forever and that you have eternal life when you receive him because you you become a child of this of god you're talking about it but so anyway the you know for myself i had one brother that was two years older than me and when i was 18 i was in the air force i came back home and i was all excited and i 
I think I was sharing with him and stuff like that, you know, and he was still going to church and stuff like that. And he said, what bugged him years later, he talked to me about, he said, what bugged him was his little brother come back home and tell him about he was saved. He said, that just, it just irritated the heck out of him. But you know what? He started listening. And I remember he had a, he had a business where he was on the road a lot, you know, in the car and listening. And he, would, he was tuning, it, tuning into good Christian broadcasting, you know, like persons like Jay Vernon McGee and different ones like that. And he was hearing the gospel for the first time. And it was several years later that he received the Lord. You know, it's like that. But I thought, how neat, you know, it was, you know, here I come back and I was his irritation. But it was an irritation for good. That's what God's talking about in here. You know, you and your household. And then I had another brother that was seven years older than me. And uh, him and his wife, they, you know, they were all acting and like, you know, they, they were saved and they weren't. But um, my sister-in-law had a tumor up on, on, her, on the side here. And they had to cut it open and, or cut it out. And when it did, it kind of left part of her face paralyzed and, um, you know, real weak on the one side. But when she was in that hospital, there was a lady that came and was telling about the gospel. And she got saved and her, and her husband too, Jerry, my brother. I thought, hallelujah. You know, it's just how God comes in and, and does this. Because, you know, he's interested more than just you and your your little world here. He sees a big world and he has plans for you to, to take and, and use you, your testimony, to talk to other people. And all, all we're doing here is just we're telling about our testimonies and things. And it's the story that brings life to other people because it's not just you. It's his life. He anoints it. And he, he takes and speaks to their heart. It's not your job. He does it through his spirit like that. And so as you open up your mouth and just share things, you love them, help them out, different things like that, he uses these things to speak to people's hearts. And it's just really, I don't know, uh, you know, it's just, it's just good <clears throat> to where, you know, as you come and learn. And so, you know, this last year, We've been sharing a lot on communion and different things to where uh, some of the teachings that we heard just a few years ago of the power that's in the communion and how it sets us free and how there's a healing aspect of a, a provision that God has made for us for healing for all our diseases and sicknesses and, and shortcomings. And my wife's going to read a story about a lady. And I think it was just really neat, and we'll talk about it afterwards. You want to go ahead, hon? Here is a praise report from a precious lady celebrating how she had been set free from 20 years of depression and taking more than five types of prescription medication to help her manage her bouts of anxiety, fear, and long-term insomnia. Here is a portion of what she wrote to us. One day, as I was talking, Talk, taking a walk, listening to a teaching on the Holy Communion, I felt a stirring in my heart to learn more about it. Each night before bed, I would take part, partake of the Holy Communion and thank the Lord for exchanging His wholeness for my brokenness at the cross. I also began partaking of the Lord's Supper with the women's Bible study I was holding in my home. As the Spirit led me, I began to sleep without sleep medication. I had previous, previously been on for the last 10 years. Then little by little, I began to take less and less of the medication I was prescribed for all my other conditions. Six months after studying, professing and receiving Jesus' health, righteousness, and soundness of mind, I stand whole, grateful, and full of joy. I am now free from condemnation, fear, and depression. Praise the, praise the Lord. He has allowed me to minister to women, to set them free, and live the abundant life that he died to give us. 
I am so grateful for the truth of his grace that has set me free and blessed my family, and I am sharing God's grace with others now, watching the Lord set them free. There is no greater gift. Just like this praise report, your testimony, your experience of being touched by the grace of God is an important part of living the overcoming life. Your testimony also becomes a word of life and hope for many others, pointing them to the goodness of our loving Savior and the breakthrough he has for them. Thanks, sweetie. What, you know, this last year... Um, We've been sharing about the communion and to where the there's the element of the of the juice, the wine, and the bread. And what they are is the back in the when the Passover came, you remember that night at Egypt, he said to take take that little lamb and kill it, you know, and take the blood, put it on the doorpost, and then that night they had to eat that lamb. And it was a it was a foreshadowing of coming of Jesus to where when he laid his life down. But in his body, that eating of that lamb that night was his body. And the, drink, the blood was his, on the doorposts of that lamb was his blood that was gonna take away the sins of the world. And so in the body part, you know, Paul was talking about the discerning of the body. There's a healing that goes on. By his stripes we are healed. And it's just like this lady here in this story you know, where there's been a healing that's been going on for her as she's been partaking, as she sees, she, she's seeing Jesus. We've experienced a lot of that this last year or several years ourselves. You want to share a story or thing comes to mind for about ourselves, you know, with just with the communion, what we've learned. Um, well, we had never done it on a daily basis or anything like that before, but now we are. We take it at breakfast and um, sometimes more often. And the Lord is, we've been praying for healing for our knees and different parts of our body that are falling apart. And, and now we are strong and healthy and we've been, uh, it, it encourages us to pray for others. Mm -hmm. It really has been, an, um, it's just been a real neat experience. And I just want to, is kind of close up the program here with, with this, is uh, in this communion, this is something that, you know, God has given to us so that as a, you know, just as a free, something that's free. And, you know, he's given it to us because he knows it's precious and powerful. You know, that tonight, you know, um, just get some elements in your family. You know, and to have your whole family take the elements of the, of the bread and the wine. And see in that bread, you know, as you're taking it tonight in your home, see that that's his body. And that every stripe that was laid on his back was for healing for different diseases that were out here in this world. And they had a name on it. If you ever had cancer, you've ever had a broken bone, mental disorder, in Jesus' body, he, when he was on that, on that way to, to the cross and that beating was taken, he saw your name with that disease. And he says, I'm going to reverse it. And he says, and so as you take this little piece of bread, it was like this. Don't look at it as just a, well, what can a little piece of bread do? Like that. It's his body. And so see, you know, as when you take this, see, you know, see healing coming to your body. And not only your body, but your friends and things like that, you know. But start taking it yourself and just watch, watch what, what will change, you know, I guess. That's like I say. For ourselves, it's just been, our eyes have been being opened and opened for these last three years more and more and more. And I'm just excited about it because... You know, we, we've run into some uh, cu couple cases just around home, you know, where a little boy has leukemia, seven years old, you know, and we've been talking to the mom, and we want to go over there, and, and she's a believer, and just share with this communion with her. And you leave something behind that she can do with her family, but it's life. It brings life to the family, you know, and, you know, there's, 
other cases, you know, just men. I was talking to the man that um, fabricates like the gutters for the rain, the ra the rain, you know, on a house. And he was talking about his wife, and she had something in her sinuses, and she was blowing, and the blood was coming out, but it took and caused a leakage up in the brain, you know, and they're kind of going, wow, you know, it doesn't sound, doesn't sound very good, you know, and I, I was telling him about this, you know, I says, get this and start reading about it, because this is powerful, you know, it's stuff that medicine, medicine only has a certain limitation over here, because it just has a limitation because it's not divine. You know, it's of this earth and the things that are of this earth which are fallen. But there's, a, there's an element here that is divine, comes from heaven. And if it's come from heaven, let's use it, you know, to where um, it just, it's just really, really good, you know, for, for it all. So... Um, I'm just trying to wrap up here, <laughs> thinking with it. I don't know. It's just, you know, it's so precious that um, a precious, a precious thing that he's he's given to us that we can do, you know. And you know, let's partake of it. Let's let's do it. We normally uh, partake with the uh, the fellowship here with you. We'll do it next time. So, um, it is. You know, just seeing how he's given us power. And I was just listening to something on the way down here. You know, it's like this. So where, you know, you have sickness and disease in your, in your um, body right now. We'd like to pray for you. Just take a few minutes and pray for you and for your family. You know, and um, just repeat after us. You know, as you, as you see that whatever that sickness is for your child, for yourself. So you like that. Lay your hand. I just only ask that you would lay your hand on that part, wherever, wherever it is. As we, re, as we pray, just repeat, repeat after us and just see Jesus touching it because Jesus has already taken that already from you. Just repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, thank you that you are touching this part of my body right now. I see by your Holy Spirit, you're coming and you're touching this and you have paid for, for this disease here or over here or wherever it is, blind spots in the, in, in the brain, tumors in the brain, tumors in the body. We just ask, we, we take right now, we speak to those tumors Tumor, you dry up in the name of Jesus. This name that is above every name. Sickness, you leave this body right now. I am healed in Jesus' name. I am healed. Thank him. Just thank him for that, that touch that he's doing to you right now. <coughs> Folks, we love you. We, we just want the very, very best that Jesus has for you. And as we meet, we'll meet again next time. Just really love you. Go with, go with Jesus. He, he'll never leave you or forsake you. He's coming again, and it's real soon, and we're going to be in heaven forever and ever in eternity. We love you, and God bless you. Thank you.